Hey, what's up everybody? Back outside, welcome to another video. Russ with RWG Research here and uh, rwgresearch.com. Check it out. I haven't posted any of these videos on my website. I need to do that. So uh, today's date is of course the 24th. So 10, 24, 17 I'm outside. It's currently uh, 8.34 in the p.m. This is going to be a pretty short video. I want to bring up some points. And this time I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. I'm going to bring up one point from the last video. And before we get started, I just want to broadly say that uh, I'm glad everyone uh, hopefully is enjoying these videos and making you think, you know, bringing out some ideas of your own. Uh, please share those in the comments over on the forums and uh, feel free to uh, uh, pod positively criticize and everything that you'd like to do because all these things are beneficial. So thumbs up for that. Okay. So I talked about a scenario last time, right? And the scenario, uh, there's going to be five questions. Okay. I want you to answer these five questions down in the comments or over at the forums would be a lot better, of course. Um, so we have this water pipe, right? We talked about this in the last video, water's flowing this way, you know, it has a, uh, a reservoir and the water comes in like that. Um, so this is question number one. What am I doing? Don't ask, don't tell. Okay, ask every question, that's a good thing. Um, so number one, oh, number one. Okay, so we talked about something here. We talked about adding a, uh, a valve of something here and there was lots of things brought up about a ram pump and the idea of cavitation and uh, a green bucket down here that soaked up some water. So there's something about this um, that I did not talk about, right? There's more to this to the story. If electricity acts more like a non-compressible fluid, then this analogy holds true pretty, pretty good, right? Um, let's see. Okay, so question number one is, we talked about this side, and we talked about that if we have a check valve here, when we shut the valve, right, when the valve closes, We talked about there being a void right here and the fact that there'd be a suction where water could get sucked up into that void, all right? But what we didn't talk about was here, this side. That's actually pretty important because there's a low side here and there's a high pressure here. If this is, let's say, 100 PSI, and there is math, to go along with this, but I won't, um, I won't go this far into it. But if this was 100 PSI and the water was flowing at uh, something like uh, 15 meters per second and you slam that valve shut, um, one millisecond, okay? What is the pressure on this side of the pipe? Okay. Max pressure. I can tell you it's astronomical. Okay. That's something that we didn't cover was what happens here. So this is question number one, part A, I guess. The second question I have about this particular scenario, um, well, actually, no, this would be question number two. So question number two, all right? Question number one is this guy. And question number two, right, is how far does this analogy work with electricity? Okay, I'm not gonna write it on the board, but how far does this analogy work with electricity? 
what are some things that are exactly the same what are some things that are different and uh, just let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I'm curious to hear your thoughts I've told you lots and lots of my thoughts I made some bold claims and now I want your thoughts um, okay and then number three which I should have done this one first the number three is if we have kind of in the way of the stuff but if we have a nice sinusoidal wave okay and let it be a sinusoidal wave of a capacitor and an inductor okay let it be an oscillatory circuit we have resonance okay let's say the maximum voltage here okay is 100 volts and we'll just make it a ground state we'll say this state is zero volts and that's it you've built up this oscillatory circuit and you are resonating it let's say if there's a driver circuit to keep it going whatever you want the point is is that whenever it meets meets this threshold of 100 volts that's it you can't ever get more than 100 volts right well if you can't get more than 100 volts my question becomes this let's say i have a switch right here okay if i have a switch right here right and I have this signal okay and let's say the signal is the same okay we got one cycle and then somewhere about right there I just open the switch so the switch is originally closed right closed and open now if we're in the middle of a transfer we've got full potential swing into one side we don't just get a flat line instead what we get is this very high voltage spike and sometimes an oscillation and sometimes okay this is what's important sometimes this might be negative 500 volt and 500 volt so here right no big deal it's just oscillating but here right if we have a switch and we just open it right in the middle of a transfer we get this huge high voltage spike let it be 500 volts or more the question I'm asking you is is if we only had right a hundred volts here and zero volts here how do we get negative 500 volts here and a positive 500 volts here poor spelling forgive me where does this high voltage come from give me your thought process on how that high voltage can be there what is actually generating the high voltage okay so that's question number three i want to know where does this come from right where do this extreme voltages come from what's the function right and like i said i kind of explained it here okay Oh, I didn't remember what I was going to ask you about that. I'll do that in the last question. So I'll write number six up here so I don't forget. Okay, and it'll be about uh, this. Hmm. Now I forgot what it was. Forgive me. Anyway, where does that come from? Give me your theoretical, uh, be it physics, be it electronics, whatever your expertise is. If you're an engineer of some kind doing whatever, it can be mechanical. Like, just think, where does that come from? 
Okay? That's what I want to know. I want to know where does that come from. Okay, number four. You may have to pause the video to answer these. Remember, number two was how far does this analogy go? Number four. All right. Um, so people in this field claim that their circuit gets cold when it's producing this excess energy, this more than I put in type of energy. Where does that come from? How does it get cold? So it be an endothermic reaction. No, I'm sorry, an exothermic reaction. Right? Or is it endothermic? Right? You answered that question. Let me know why a circuit would get cold. You can use these principles too if you wish. But why does it get cold if it's if it's uh, more more out than in, right? Why does it get cold? So I, I you know, you can be, you can just throw your wild ideas out there at me. Just post them on the forums or or in the uh, comment section. Okay, number five. I told you this would be a short one. I've done a lot of my own thoughts. Now I want to hear some of yours before I go on about some of this stuff. So five. Um, I cannot spell for nothing. Imagine that. I'm an engineer. You don't spell when you're an engineer. Come on, guys. That is not how you spell fields, is it? I guess it is. We don't care about spelling in this show. Okay. It's not a show. It's my lectures. Or is it? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. So, uh, the last question. Well, I have number six up here. I was going to ask you about something. I forgot what it was. Anyway. So, you know... All these basic principles and ideas, such as electron theory, uh, it's just that. It's a, it's a theory that works pretty well. But uh, there's so many questions about the electron. What is it? What's really going on? It's an electron cloud, not an orbital like they think. So it's just an, it's just an energy cloud. What is going on? I want your guys' opinion. What kind of energetic theories do you like? And give me your references of where... Uh, where you read this other theories that you like and uh, explain to me why you like them, right? So I've, it's, I, I've really dive, you know, I, I really dove into, I really dove into, I don't know, anyway, can't speak. I looked at electron theory really close, um, the best I could, studied it the best I could and tried to understand how all these things can be happening in electron theory. And I came up with a really great principle of how to explain this and uh, and how to explain this an analogy to this and this is kind of where I got this thought process from however um, it's really just not a great theory and so one of my good friends just deals with fields and there's some great you know magnetic fields electric fields electric potentials magnetic potentials you know, electromagnetic fields, waves, whatever they are, you know, and this is good. This is a great thing because you can do a lot more with these fields than you can with electron theory. Or do you like something completely else? What is it? Let me know. So that's what I want to know. I want to know those questions. Um, again, this is just your turn to express to me your thoughts without me giving you so much information of my own thoughts and thinking because all this is... Uh, 
all this is global and um, you know thinking out loud and thinking together are helpful those things are very helpful and I appreciate all the feedback and input and positive stuff and letters and emails and everything thank you guys so much um, number six the question was um, I really don't remember what the question was. It had something to do with this when I got into this. Um, but anyway, yep, no such thing as OU. I know what question is, number six. That looks like a V, that's a terrible U. But no, no such thing as OU Unity. I believe that to be true, and if you can think about that, you'll really understand it. So number six can be this. You ask me a question, and leave it down in the comments, and I'll respond to a few of them. Um, especially the good ones that I think are relevant to this series of videos. I don't know how many more of these videos I'll be doing right now. I may skip a couple weeks, or a week, or maybe I'll have one next week. I don't know. I like doing this every week because it really gets us global consciously thinking about this stuff. Um, but it's time for me to hear your thoughts on these basic principles. So I'll leave this up for a few minutes. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, thanks for watching. God bless. Of course, as always, read the Bible more. Such good information in there. It really is about sharing, caring, loving, giving. Lots of things that you can think about this type of technology within there if you wish. It's just a wonderful place to uh, stick your nose in if you've never done it. All right, God bless. Have a good day. Bye-bye.